A person hits the door in a pub, and the pub owner, Lark, who seems troubled, opens the door. The mysterious person then gives him some money and says, I want to talk to her. But Lark refuses and tells the person to leave. We then discover that the mysterious individual meant to say that there is apparently a scary and mysterious woman living underground in this pub. She has some strange powers and communicates with those who lose someone by reviving the dead and possessing to herself. Lark starts recording a video and says, there is a mysterious being living underground in this house who never leaves. You are now the owner here, and you have one duty. Never let this evil creature be free. Then he adds, I will take this curse with me, and if you see this film, know that I have not succeeded. He then tries to set fire to the underground with the mysterious woman, but catches fire himself and dies. Following Lark's death, a lawyer contacts his daughter Iris and says, You have inherited a pub that belonged to your father. She arranges to arrive at the place of her father's death by plane and train, and meets with a lawyer named Ned, who claims to be in charge of her father's assets, inheritance, and legal matters. He says he will talk to her about the assets after selling the property. The lawyer then takes her to the rundown pub, and after visiting, Iris decides to stay there for the night. If you enjoy our content, please support us by subscribing or liking so we can recap more films for you. When Iris is about to fall asleep, suddenly the sound of an alarm clock wakes her up. As she wants to discover and find the source of the noise, the same mysterious person seen at the beginning of the movie appears in front of Iris and says, I'm Neil, here's two grand in cash, and I want to see my wife now that you're the new owner of this pub. Iris, finding it hard to believe, thinks he must be insane, but Neil insists, Take this money, I know the way underground, and I'll come back to the pub tomorrow night. Later, the estate lawyer meets with Iris to transfer ownership of the old property, reminding her that her father had previously recorded a videotape containing necessary instructions and bequests. That night, Iris talks with her friend Katie about becoming the new owner. She also mentions that someone offered her $4,000 to allow access to the basement to meet someone. She reveals that many used to come here for thrills and laughs, and her father probably took money from them. Then Neil knocks on the pub door, and with his guidance, they find the right key to the underground. Inside, the underground with a big hole on the wall, dark and mysterious, leading to somewhere. A chair is placed in the middle of the underground. Initially, Iris and Katie are in disbelief, but Neil tells them to listen carefully. Suddenly, a strange and terrifying figure with extended eerie hands and a cloth-covered head emerges from the hole in the wall, startling Katie and Iris. As the eerie figure approaches Iris, she tells it to stay away, and Neil realizes she will listen to her because Iris is the new owner of the house. Neil, who had done this before, sits next to this terrifying woman and says, I want to talk to my wife. Please help me. The woman extends her hand indicating a request, as per the rule that anyone wanting to talk to their lost loved ones must have an object related to them. Then, the woman swallows the object and transforms into the persona of the deceased, allowing individuals to speak and communicate with their lost ones. Neil hands over his late wife's ring to the sinister woman, who swallows it and suddenly transforms into a different person. Instead of Neil's expectation, she turns into his deceased mother as he pulls the cloth off her face. Neil then says, I didn't mean to summon you, mother, but now that you're here, tell me why you took your own life with committing a suicide. And why was I forced to be passed around among family members during my childhood and they sent me to boarding school? These questions awaken the devil inside the creature and terrify Neil thoroughly. Suddenly she vanishes, grabs Neil, and vomits on his face. Meanwhile, Iris pulls the cloth off the demonic being's face. The being then disappears back into the hole in the wall. They hurry out in fear, locking the door behind them. Kitty and Iris tell Neil, This is your fault. But Neil says I forgot that the demon only gives us two minutes for talking to our loved ones. Neil insists, Now that this being has brought back my deceased mother, it can bring back my wife Sarah. I don't care about the money, I just want to do this one more time. In the next scene, Iris and Kitty watch the video that belongs to Iris' late father together.
Owen Lark, Iris's father in the video, warns never to get close to the hole inside the wall. He emphasizes that as long as you stay upstairs, it has no power and can't reach you. This creature has the power to revive the dead, but it only gives you two minutes, and then you become its possession, and it can do whatever it wants with you. Never be tempted to do this because you will be cursed, and even if you manage to escape, you will be plagued with illness and other accidents. In the end, he declares that he used to have a family, but now he only has her, referring to his daughter Iris, and then abruptly cuts off the video. However, Iris doesn't listen to her father's words and insists that she can make a lot of money this way, build her life, and save herself from being miserable. Despite the objections of her friend, she decides to stay and has now learned the rules of facing this demonic being. Using her newfound knowledge, she plans to get a lot of money from Neil and allow him to see his lost wife. They then proceed with the preparations, and as Katie were in the corridor, suddenly one of the framed photos hanging on the wall falls and breaks. Katie picks up the photo and searches the name written on the back online. In that moment, she sees the spirit of the person in the photo for a few seconds before it disappears. Iris goes to Neil's house and invites him to come and deal with his wife's spirit possession once again. Neil commits to paying for the service. They then start the process with Neil successfully bringing back Sarah by using his wife's necklace and giving it to the demonic woman. He wants to know what trouble came upon her the night of the accident. He also asks Sarah to reveal the man she was involved with, telling his wife, I know you've been wanting to leave me lately. Suddenly, two minutes have elapsed, and the demonic spirit takes control, disappears from the chair, and terrifies Iris with its ugly face. In the next scene, Iris witnesses scenes from her father activating the curse to reconnect with his wife, Iris's mother, who died also because of the curse. Iris then realizes her father, Owen Lark, was trying to save himself from the curse, but ends up losing his life. Subsequently, Iris hears a voice from underground, waking her from sleep. She goes there and sees her father looking at a hole in the wall. Suddenly he rubs his own face completely, turning into a cloth sack, and as Iris attempts to pick up the sack, she realizes it's actually herself. She then gasps for breath and wakes up from the dream, realizing she'd been asleep all along. Katie comes to Iris's aid, unties the knot around her neck, and saves her. Later, they argue about leaving the place to escape the curse. But Iris insists, saying, I don't want to go back to my miserable life. Katie leaves her and checks an address on a postal photo, discovering a deserted house where someone has collected information related to the curse and demonic entity. She quickly gathers the documents and leaves the place. Meanwhile, Iris summons her father and realizes that he never came to protect them to avoid the curse. Her mother's death was a consequence of these events. Iris seeks a solution from her father, but he insists that the only way is not to use the power of this entity until your name is the rightful owner of this property, defying the grip of this curse. Just as the two minutes pass, a demonic presence rises again. In the final moments, Iris's father apologizes, taking responsibility for all the events, then bids farewell. Meanwhile, Kitty messages Iris that she thinks she has found information to break free from this entity, but Iris doesn't respond. Iris then sets fire to the house deed, hoping it will rid her of the curse. Feeling exhausted and cornered, Kitty reaches the pub, but doesn't find Iris. She's been taken somewhere while she sleeps. Going underground, she suddenly faces the malevolent being again, trying to escape, but it says wait. In a sudden twist, she summons the man in the photo, and he reveals that the curse dates back four hundred years to a woman with the power to resurrect the dead, dubbed a witch. Despite being burned alive, she returns triggering famine, plague, and death. An order of brothers resorts to dark magic to stop her, trapping her in an underground tomb. But the tomb is disturbed again by order of brothers to take advantage of her again and again. But the more they use her, the stronger she becomes, leading all to their doom. He continues to exist in a limbo between her and the outside world. There is only one guardian, and anyone who signs that document gets trapped in a curse. Then the demonic presence returns and tells her, you don't own this place, frightening Katie. 
Then Iris woke up from her sleep and realized through the phone that Kitty was trapped down in underground in a wall crevice. She went there, heard Kitty's voice, and rescued her. But suddenly she saw Kitty's body in a corner and realized that it wasn't Kitty, but a demonic presence. Before she could react, it disappeared and in its hideous form moved above her head on the ceiling. Iris, terrified, ran away, and suddenly Niall saved her. Later, Iris decides to heed her father's advice and seal the place forever to weaken the demonic being. This decision doesn't sit well with Niall. In the next scene, Iris wakes up after falling asleep with the calming pills given by Niall and discovers that Niall is making a deal with a demonic entity underground to take control and is about to sign a pact. By doing this, he intends to both see Sarah and help the demonic entity. In reality, by these actions, he is betraying Iris. Then he summons Sarah again, and as Iris clandestinely listens, she realizes that Niall is actually responsible for his own wife's death. Niall becomes aware of Iris's presence and chases her. In the ensuing chase, Iris flees to the roof of the house, but Niall throws her off the height, resulting in Iris's death. Niall then takes Iris's cell phone to summon her. Finally, the demonic presence within Iris's body speaks to Niall, thanking him for killing the final caretaker and summoning her, thus breaking free. The demonic entity asserts its presence in Iris's body and confronts Niall's spirits, including his mother and wife, ultimately killing Niall by striking him with a chair. The place goes up in flames as the demonic entity exits, marking the end of the film.